With vaccines now widely available in the U.S., more and more people will be able to get together with their moms this Sunday for Mother's Day. But this year, one local mother-daughter duo is taking the celebration up a notch. I love that. That was Boston Pops violinist Ala Jojatu and her daughter Maria performing in a special Mother's Day Pops performance honoring women. It's part of the Pops' first ever streaming season, available starting tomorrow. Boston Pops conductor Keith Lockhart joins me now. Happy Mother's Day there, Keith Lockhart. Thank you, Jim. Happy Mother's Day to you as well. <laughs> so it's great to see you. How miserable has this year been for you, Keith? Um, scale of 1 to 10? 12, 13, I mean, you know, seriously, I mean, we, I know it's been, you know, I'm very lucky. I've been mm -hmm. lucky, much more lucky than many people, but it is a very frustrating year in which to be a performing artist. We're glad to be, it looks like coming out of it yeah. and joining live audiences uh, this summer at Tanglewood. So rather than wallowing in your misery, as I said <laughs> a couple of seconds ago, tomorrow we see the first of, I think, what's a six-part first ever streaming season for the Boston Pops. Start with Mother's Day. I've read what you've got. It sounds fabulous. First of all, that mother-daughter duo, have they played with the Pops before together or have they not? Oh, you know, when we started thinking about how to do a Mother's Day concert, we thought since we're going to we're going to start, you know, on Mother's Day weekend. It made sense to start that way. And the Pops is often, you know, a, a occasion for celebration. Yeah. Uh, I started thinking about what we could do besides the normal hearts and flowers, we love you, Mom, stuff. And we had that. But we decided that we would do a concert that really paid tribute to women uh, as creators, as performers, mm -hmm. as rabble rousers. Uh, and I thought, wow, you know, there must be, a, there are a lot of moms at the Pops, you know, mm -hmm. overuse that tagline a little bit. <laughs> I started thinking about which one of them would be really great to feature with their daughter. And somebody mentioned Ala, and I just clicked. And Maria is a wonderful young violinist. Ala is a real member of the family. Her husband, Mihail, also plays in yeah. the Boston Symphony. Boston Pops. So watching the shot, the cutaway shots of him looking like a proud dad in oh, the orchestra man. while this is happening. That's great. But you know, it's, it's really a way to, one thing we've been able to do this year is show that uh, the all these people you didn't know in the orchestra. I mean, people know me, uh, but it's a chance to meet the, you know, 80 other people on mm. stage and they have families and lives and interesting stories. What else is part of this Mother's Day program? Um, music by, well, all the way from Clara Schumann, the wife of Robert Schumann, one of the great musicians of mid-19th century Europe, to Joan Tower and Rachel Breuerville, two living female composers. Tribute to Carole King, because mm. this year is the 50th anniversary, believe it or not, of the release of Tapestry. And uh, music wow. by, oh, music from My Fair Lady, uh, Luck Be a Lady, all sorts of fun stuff. By the way, aren't the drop kicks, am I wrong? Are the drop kicks doing a piece of something or, or no? No, I was just waiting for you to set that up. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, our friends, the drop kicks, those of you who are more into TikTok than I am, uh, probably know that uh, sea shanties became a big thing a mm. couple of months ago. A Scottish mail carrier uh, put on the Wellerman onto it. It just got, it got millions and millions of hits and other people have been doing their interpretations. Well, we thought we could do a pretty good sea shanty. So uh, we uh, in-house arranged, Larry Wolf arranged it. We talked to Ken and the Dropkicks and they were really into doing this because of course, you know, they all love their moms. And uh, we decided to do a whole video essay about mothers within the Boston Pops and our own mothers uh, right. to the uh, you know, what to, What shall we do with our mom on Mom's Day, basically? It's <laughs> great. By the way, talk about a small world. I used to do commercials when I was in commercial radio for Ken Casey's mother's spa, I want you to know. So it's a very <laughs> small one degree of separation. You know, when I saw that thing with the mother and daughter, obviously I saw the masks on the people who are not using wind or that sort of thing. What are the protocols? I mean, I assume... It looked like musicians were distance a bit from each other. Was I right about that? Everybody wearing masks who can? We're pretty much in the same protocols that we were in when we started doing this in October. Uh, that will probably change as the guidance has changed, of course. Right now, uh, all of our people who can't wear masks are 10 feet apart. 
which makes the stage have to be very, very large. And even the people with masks are six feet apart. And that will continue through this spring pop season. And hopefully, I think we'll adjust it, loosen those restrictions, like I said, following the guidance for Tanglewood and beyond. When you said, uh, when you said uh, the, the Mother's Day thing kicks off the six part series. The other five appear, is it Thursday afternoon at noon? One week separated from each other, is that right? Five more weeks after a tomorrow. Six week, a six week virtual series starting with Thursday the 6th and uh, with Mother's Day. And then one each uh, through the next five weeks after that. Uh, four new shows produced just for this season and two encore presentations. You know, I'm looking at you, is this not your, is this your 27, 27th year, right? Did I get it right? It's my and technically, it's my 27th, but I think people are going to call it my 26th because we kind of missed one. So, but we never celebrated 25, did we, or did I no, miss it? No, no, no. You should see there's some adorable, you go about, you know, going to Symphony Hall these days is bizarre for all of us because we expect to see our audience, the people we connect with there. And one of the funniest things is you look in the, uh, on the, in the corridors and you see posters for celebrate Keith Lockhart's 25th anniversary season it's kind of a it's it's kind of a dystopian future sort of movie you know keith i did a thing about, i don't know six months into the pandemic with you and a wonderful woman i think her name was i think it was hazel dean am i right hazel right, dean right? davis yes right talking Who's, about uh, the new england musicians relief fund how how did your players survive this i don't just mean physically but financially it had to be really hard no well, of course, the players of the Boston Symphony and the Boston Pops have the advantage of being employed full time right. by a big organization. And they have, of course, everybody has made sacrifices, but uh, they at least still get a paycheck. But the freelancers whom uh, Hazel was representing have many of them have had nothing. Some of them we've seen back during these pops tapings and some of them have said, well, this is the first time I've played with anybody else oh. now in 15 months. Oh. And uh, obviously, you know, people have dug into their resources and some people have second jobs and that sort of thing. But it's going to it's going to be a while before the freelance industry in Boston recovers. And historically, it's been one of the, the one of the strongest in the entire world. You know, you've mentioned Tanglewood a couple of times, and I assume that uh, signifies your excitement about performing in front of an audience. I don't know if you remember, I was looking today, I saw the headline when the Tanglewood season was announced in the Boston Globe, and it was so great. Tanglewood's 2021 season looks almost normal, which is so <laughs> <laughs> exciting. That was the headline in the Globe. But I'm assuming since you jumped from the spring streaming season to Tanglewood, that means that July 4th is a casualty of capacity no, things or what? Uh, we will, things will be being announced in the near future. I think we all realize that July 4th really has to happen. Right. But uh, as of yet, we're not, we're not able to say exactly how it's going to happen, but well, it's certainly my intention to make sure that something live gets produced for the 4th of July. Fabulous. It's too important an event for all of us. I couldn't, uh, everybody agrees is watching this. So how excited are you about the prospect of not in the not too distant future playing in front of a live audience? What's that feel like in your head? I'm afraid I'm going to feel like, you know, a kid at my grad school recital again, you know, and all <laughs> nervous about the audience. It's, I've, I've gotten totally over that uh, that by this point. I really, I think I'm going to appreciate them more than I ever have before. And it's, it, it's reminded all of us that music is a two-way street and it's really about interacting with, mm -hmm. with those people, even if those people don't know you're interacting with them. So I get back on a podium uh, well, whatever July 4th is. And then right after that, my summer festival down in North Carolina, I'll be doing Great. some Beethoven, which is a nice place to start again. And I'm so looking forward to greeting the audience at, at Tanglewood. And hopefully we'll all be vaccinated and in close spaces with each other, which you have to be to perform uh, starting in the fall. Well, not only will I be at Tanglewood, I will be logging on as soon as the radio show is over tomorrow to Mother's Day. So congratulations, Keith. Can't wait to see it. Happy Mother's Day yet again. That's great. Thank you so much, Jim. Good to talk to you. Good to see you.